Good morning, everyone. I'm making this video on the morning of Sunday, April 12th. It will be posted online and it will be put in the middle of the interactive Zoom worship. The title of the sermon is Now Things Are Different. And certainly things are different because I have not gotten to greet you and shake your hand this morning. I'm not getting to look at your facial expression as I speak this morning. I'm not even getting to wonder if someone's looking out the window, what they're pondering. Things are different because I'm looking at this screen, you're looking at a screen. In your environment, there may be things that are nourishing or things that are distracting. It is very different physical space than being in that sanctuary where for 75 years the congregation has gathered together. But one thing that's not different is that the calendar tells us that certain holidays are upon us. April 8th began Passover in the Jewish tradition. April 12th today is Easter in the Christian tradition. And April 23rd in the evening begins Ramadan in the Muslim tradition. So I'm going to be talking about Passover, Easter, and Ramadan. One of the gifts that has come my way in recent weeks is the amazing resources shared by other religious leaders around the country as they figure out how to cope and lead and support their communities during this pandemic, this time of isolation. And so I'd like to share some of their wisdom with you. So to start with Passover, which commemorates the liberation of the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. I'd like to share a reflection from the rabbi Norman Lipson, who lifts up a very particular part of the tradition in the Seder meal when bitter herbs are eaten. And these are to help people remember the lash of the whip the bitterness of bondage and forced labor. He says, this year, upon eating these bitter herbs, break from the habit of trying to mitigate their sharpness by rushing to drink wine or sweetening it with some cake. He says, this year, really taste the sharpness, the bitterness, Realize it's not just a reminder of what once was in the past, but is still the ongoing reality of what too many people experience every day. The point of Passover is this is a different kind of time, and we remember it, and we know it now. Secondly, Easter, and I myself was raised in the Christian tradition, to me, a very useful meaning of Easter is that in our lives, endings are not the final answer. New beginnings happen in surprising ways. They happen after the incubation of winter. They come from invisible wellsprings deep in the earth, deep in our souls. Love rises again. Love shows up again and again. New relationships form and new skills arrive, arise. I was especially touched to find a um, prayer and litany service written by three Christian leaders seven years ago in Boston in April, right after the violence during the Boston Marathon. And they said that they vividly came to understand the meaning of the resurrection. In their words, resurrection is about seeing life in the midst of death not by looking away or glossing over what is there, but by seeing with the eyes of Christ, who taught his disciples a way of resurrection, promised them a spirit that would rise from the ruins of death, an advocate, a witness, a comforter that would never forsake them. They write that they found new ways of understanding resurrection right on the finish line at Boylston Street and in the hallways of the Boston hospitals and in the churches that swung open the doors of welcome to dream new dreams, to strategize, to mobilize resources, and to shout their alleluias 
differently. Every year, Easter helps us mark a new and different kind of time, and this year we know it so vividly. In the Muslim tradition, there is Ramadan, a time of fasting each year, a time when Muslims take a break during the sunlight hours from putting physical nourishment in their mouths and having it physically digested, and instead reflect on what is the spiritual sustenance from something greater, from their understanding of Allah. And that is a time that is set apart for them for spiritual sustenance and remembering. So my friends, Passover, Easter, Ramadan, all of these are rituals that help humans remember not to get stuck in the ordinary. But you know what? That is not a reminder that we need right now. We get it already. We can't gather to celebrate. There aren't Easter egg hunts. There aren't shared Seder meals. There aren't celebrations to break the Ramadan fast together. I have heard so much grief and sorrow from people that rely on these annual celebrations to connect with family and friends. And maybe some of you are feeling that loss right now also. But when we look carefully, perhaps we can understand a deeper layer to this equation. Here's how it looks in my mind. Ritual plus gathering equals holiday. The ritual has the values embedded. The gathering brings some play. But during this time, when we have to take away the gathering, we still have the ritual and the values embedded. Right now, more than ever, we are living into our reality of the Unitarian Universalist values that the good of the whole is as important as the good of the individual and vice versa. In this time, more than ever, we are living into our UU values that we need to steward scarce resources. In this time, more than ever, we are reminded to care for those we see as well as those we cannot see. Yes, yes, the world is different now, but our values remain the same. Blessed be. Amen.